Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I um, uh, hope you're all well. Um, we're about to start our uh, webinar uh, talk uh, today. Um, and before we start, as always, we'll start with a quick Namuni uh, Antanam. Um, so I'm just going to put that on. And if everybody can uh, join in uh, where they are uh, with Namuni Antanam. Thank you everyone and um, welcome to our webinar. Uh, thank you all for joining in. Um, just as a quick introduction, um, for those who've joined on Zoom, you should see at the bottom a few icons which will allow you to interact uh, uh, during the question and answer session of this webinar. So you'll see a icon which says Q&A for question and answer. So if anybody has any question, please uh, submit your question um, by typing it into that uh, icon and cover as many questions as possible um, during uh, the session uh, today. Uh, there should also be a poll that we're going to be doing through the session. So again, those who've joined on Zoom will be able to take part in the poll. And when the poll comes up, all you need to do is just select your answer and submit it. And again, we'll guide you through it when it uh, comes um, comes to it. And also there is a chat icon there. If anybody uh, has a comment or feedback, please put it on chat. Uh, and I do want to say any questions, please submit it using the question and answer icon rather than the chat icon. So we, we can all then sort of um, manage the questions as we're getting them uh, on the Q&A um, icon. Um, so th that's all I wanted to say. Um, and also, uh, if you are joining us uh, on the Oshawa website or on the Oshawa YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to see um, the webinar today. Um, but those who are joining us through Zoom will be able to take part in the Q&A session and interact uh, as well um, during the session as well. So welcome to everybody, whether you're joining from Zoom, uh, the Oshawa website or the YouTube channel. I just want to hand over to Kaushik by our uh, Vice President um, to say a few opening words, and then we'll uh, hand over to uh, Hina Modi. So, Kaushik Bhai, if you want to say a few words. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar. I'm really happy that, you know, Hina Ben is doing this uh, webinar, especially in the current uh, crisis that we are faced with, something like this uh, or to focus on our health uh, body and mind uh, should be excellent. I myself am shielding myself so you can see I'm very lazy, laid back in my bed and uh, enjoying this. So uh, 
you know, I'm sure that it is going to be a wonderful session. Just a quick one on the Oshwal efforts that are going on. Ashish has been really working hard with his wife, Bhavani. Both of them have been uh, doing a lot of uh, work in the background. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate all the efforts that are going on. Uh, on the Oshwal website, you will have seen the efforts that we are making to support our key frontline workers in the NHS by delivering meals. We are also supporting the uh, uh, elderly and the vulnerable people in our society with various different things. Again, all this information is available on our website. We also have a donation page. So if you would like to support our drive uh, and uh, you know to support this cause, please do go onto the website and uh, there are various options. You can pay by credit card, debit card, bank transfer, or even a check. Everything is there. So please, we would love your support. And once again, thank you for joining in. I'm not going to take up too much of your time because we need to get into this quickly. So back to you, Ashish. Uh, th thank you, Gaushikbhai. And um, straight away, I'm just going to hand over to uh, Ina Modi, um, uh, who will take us through her presentation uh, and then answer some questions. So, Hina, uh, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, I'm going to do the talk in a mixture of English and Gujarati because I've been told that um, that will be really helpful. So, let's begin. So um, the talk today is going to be about nutrition, what's important for a healthy body and mind. Um, just in case you didn't know, I'm qualified as a nutrition practitioner and a vegan and vegetarian nutritional pra therapy practitioner as well. So there are three things, the triad of good um, health and well-being that we're going to discuss. Um, if the body is given the right fuel and conditions, it's empowered to heal itself. It can regenerate, rejuvenate, and rebuild. So if you imagine, um, gadi hoy, ane ema petrol na kanu hoy, ne, anybody ame diesel na kide, to gadi circuit na na chale ne, ekdom like uh, slow chale, ke, or biju ka, ekdom like, it just stops working. So it's the same for that. If, if we don't put the right fuel into our body, our body won't work the way it needs to. Also, the immune system is, um, can be powerful enough to defend our body against invaders, but again, only if we put the right conditions, the right fuel into it. For the above to happen, we need the mind, the body, and the spirit to be at their best. So, Ajya Mitrane Nivatkar, so mind, body, and spirit, and how to make it the best it can possibly be. Um, there's a model. I, I call it SADES, so the S and then D-A-C-E, SADES. So the D in SADES stands for digestion. And digestion food is broken down and So that's digestion. Bashi, DES ma A is for absorption. So intestines hoi um je grahan karano hoy e bodu absorb thai jay ane pachi cells ma poche so that's to do with the absorption the c is circulation so je blood na cells hoy e bodha nutrients bade pochare ane any lithe sharir ne je um nourishment joy e poche ena pase and the last one is E for elimination. So the waste is removed. For good health, we need digestion, absorption, circulation, and elimination to be wonderful. So that is in our hands. Okay, that's, that's something that we need to do. Okay, so now, um, if you can, via the chat option, can you write down what you think or send the message to say what you think the S in SADES stands for? So SADES ma je S che pelo akshar e tamne su lage che ke e sena sena upar hase. E tamne moklao so please chat ma.
Ashish, when the messages come through, will you just let me know? Uh, Hina, if you open the chat icon, you, you'll see the messages as they come through. It won't let me switch between the two. <laughs> All right, uh, we have somebody called the S stands for sun. Okay. Uh, got another one who says S stands for socks. Um, another one who says S stands for smile. Uh, self is another one. Okay. System is another one. Uh, swallow is another one. Uh, sugar is another one. Sound body is another one. Two more and then we'll stop. Uh, saturation is another one. Space. Interesting. Okay, so it actually stands for stress. Um, so not something we want, but that's what it stands for. So what we're going to do now is Ashish is going to share the first poll. So we've got a poll where we want you to answer a question. So do you think this, do you think stress can affect digestion? And Ashish is going to share a poll. And then if you could respond to that, that'd be great. We'll give it five more seconds. Yep. So the options are yes, no, and you're not sure. Ke ha stress um yes or thai um digestion upar ke na thai or not sure. Okay. All right, we're gonna close it uh, in two seconds. Okay. Uh, we got unsurprisingly hundred percent uh, saying yes. Um, Stress can affect digestion. Wonderful, top marks. Okay, so now the second poll, there's gonna be four. Second poll, can, do you think stress affects absorption? So stress near sir absorption upar thai ke nahi? Ha or na or not sure? And just to remind you, absorption is when the nutrients get absorbed from the food. Okay. A few more seconds. I think most people have voted. So I'm going to close it in five seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you. Um, so 94% said yes. Interesting. Uh, and 3% said no, and 3% said uh, not. I don't know. Okay. So the third poll is about circulation. So this is where the nutrients are carried by the blood cells around the body, um, and that's the circulation. So yes, stress can affect circulation, or no, it can't, or you're not sure. Okay, a few more seconds. So stress near sir thai circulation upar ke nahi? Ha, na, or not sure. Okay, we're gonna close it in five seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, um, so the results for this one is 89% uh, said yes. 3% oh. um, said no. Okay. 9% uh, not sure. Wonderful, okay, last one. Does stress affect elimination? So that's where um, the body gets rid of what it doesn't need. eliminate stress Yes, no, or not kabar. Okay, uh, I think most people have voted. Five more seconds. Okay. Three, two, and one. 
Thank you. Um, so for this one, we have 89% again saying yes, 9% uh, uh, saying no, and 3% saying not sure. Okay. Um, my mistake, by the way, um, I was meant to ask you at the beginning of the talk to grab a pen and paper. So if you don't have a pen, if you can grab one, that would be great. Or even if you use your phone just to make a note, is not for anything else. Um, wonderful to see the polls. Um, yeah, so what I wanted you to make a note of is if you voted yes, that stress can affect any of these things, whether it's all of them or some of them, can you just make a note on your piece of paper about why you think stress affects it? It doesn't have to be long paragraphs, it can just be bullet points because it's only for you. Um, but I think it will help when, when the talk is completed and you go back and then you want to think about it, it'll be really helpful. So just kagar ke phone upar tam jaa la khilo ke tamne kem laigu ke stress ai ke vas tuma asar thai cuz it definitely in the first one everyone it was 100% so the voted yes asar thai so there must be some thought there so i'm going to give you 20 seconds just to make a note Three seconds left. Okay. Um, one more bit of thinking. Can you think of a stressful situation that affected your digestion specifically or bowel movements? And if you can think of it, just write it down. Like, oh, when this happened or this happened, whatever it is, just note form. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the consequences of stress. So stress, fear, worry, anxiety, discontent, and multiple other things can cause many, many things. Some of the examples are gastric ulcers, um, excess or not enough of stomach acid. So what that means is, um, so either, stomach acid or it's not enough and um, also it can inhibit the secretions of mucus that protect the stomach and the duodenal wall from hydrochloric acid which is ulcers so what that means is mucus um, stomach protect mucus protection and the other thing is it can suppress the immune system. Uh, immune system with COVID and everything else. So not just because of that, even before COVID, we all know that it, immune system shakti shari na hoi, to flu lage ke, cold thai jai ke, cold sores thai jai ke, kai bhi asar thai sharir ma. So all of these things are affected by stress. So it's something that we really need to think about. And on top of that, um, that affects our mood and that affects our mental health. So um, the effects are not limited to one thing, they're vast. Okay, so <clears throat> here you'll need your pen and paper and, or phone. Um, stress and the choice of food. So can you think about when you feel stressed, what kind of things do you eat or drink? Like, and then after you've made a note of them, how do you feel after you've eaten or drunk those things? Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Do you feel something else? I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, so a little diagram here called comfort foods. <clears throat> so there are foods and drinks that we have, which you may have made a note of, that we go to when we feel low. So 
મૂડ ઓછો થઈ જાય લો થઈ જાય નો ઓછો થઈ જાય લો થઈ જાય તો અમને એમ થાય કે ઓ મને આ ખાવું છે કે આ પીવું છે એન્ડ દેન વોટ હેપન્સ ઇઝ યુ હેવ ધેટ ફૂડ ઓર ધેટ ડ્રિંક એન્ડ યોર મૂડ ઇઝ લિફ્ટેડ યુ ગેટ એન ઇન્સ્ટન્ટ હાઈ બટ દેન વોટ હેપન્સ યુ આપ હિયર એન્ડ યુ કમ ડાઉન યુ કે ક્રેશ એન્ડ દેન યુ વોન્ટ ટુ ડુ અગેન સો યુ રિપીટ સો યુ કીપ હેવિંગ ધીસ ફૂડ ઓર ડ્રિંક to get a high and then you crash and then you get a high and then you crash so that's a form of dependency right it's it's not good um some people have that with tea coffee you know in avagar mane challenge nahi mane mathu dukhe hu function na kari saku some people have that with chocolate some people have that with um little salty foods or oily foods everyone's different and there's no judgment it, it what it is doesn't matter the fact is that we need to recognize that we have that pattern um and there are some people who when they're upset or stressed they actually don't eat so instead of abadu ke omane a khao chi ke apu che in appetite sa ochi thai jai nahi khai khai nahi um obviously that's not good either because then shari ne jar jar hoy in in malina sake kan ke me khata nahi enough okay so um if you think back to the food and drink that you usually have or even those that you avoid can you think of any one that affects your mood so whether it's the you know tumne vichar tha ke maine apyo che ke khao che or tumne em tha ke maine nahi khao ke nahi piyo either way can you think of a way that it affects your mood i'm just going to give you 5 seconds for that cuz it's not i think you'll be able to come up with that very quickly so i already mentioned caffeine jai coffee some people think um or some people feel that without tea or coffee or some form of caffeine they can't function or they get a headache um other people need something sugary something sweet throughout the day what happens if you don't have it so so like i said some people feel that they can't function some people feel they have a headache other people maybe get snappy they get irritated um gusso jaldi utpan thai jaye you know there's so so many ways that it can affect us and and the biggest step is knowing that connection if we can realize that connection between food and drink and the way it affects our mood then that's great that's half of the journey achieved because then we just have to figure out what to do about it yeah so this this is really important step okay so physical stresses <clears throat> do you think food can create physical stresses on us just just have a think about it for those of you who think no it can't it can and for those of you who think it can well done because you're right so sugar caffeine foods that are salty foods that are oily and foods that are fatty create a direct physical stress on the inter- internal organs in our body and the internal organs are needed to detoxify the body so je vastu sharir ma che je ma thi um body detox thai ne je vastu no jaru hoy body ne 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 kaad hai really um those organs ema ema um tan pare અને પછી જે જરૂર એને જે કામ જરૂર કરવાની હોય એ ન કરી શકે બીકોઝ ઓફ ધીઝ ફિઝિકલ સ્ટ્રેસીસ ધી અધર થિંગ ધીઝ ધીઝ ફૂડ્સ ડુ ઇઝ ધ સ્ટિમ્યુલેટ આ સો આ ડોન્ટ નો હાઉ ટુ સે ધેટ ઇન ગુજરાતી બટ યા ધ સ્ટિમ્યુલેટ આ એન્ડ ધેન ધે કોઝ એન ઇમ્બેલન્સ એન્ડ ઇફ ધેટ ઇફ ધેર ઇઝ એન ઇમ્બેલન્સ ધેટ અફેક્ટ્સ આર ઇમોશનલ સ્ટેટ સો ઇટ ગોઝ બેક ટુ મૂડ અગેન okay um exercise so um this would be really good if you can just put it in the chat do you think exercise can be unbenef not beneficial so if you think exercise can be bad for the body then put yes I'll give you 5 seconds Oh, we got Ashish. 
Uh, majority are saying no. Uh, we've got a few yeses, a uh, few depends, uh, and then it says maybe in some circumstances. Okay. So, um, the effect of exercise, it does do something physical to the body, and that's the point. Um, but it can cause an unbeneficial, so a bad for you, physical stress. So the answer is yes, it can do that. Um, the issue is when we over-exercise, um, we can deplete the body. So the, the energy that's needed for other things is then wiped out. So what we need to do, I'm not saying don't exercise to anybody. <laughs> I'm saying if you, <clears throat> for example, just say, Tame daroj das minute chalta ho. Ane pachi tamne am thai ke oh na man exercise vadhar wani che to tamne ek kala chalwa mando. That going from ten minutes to one hour is too soon, too fast. So what we need to do is do graded exercise. Itle aste aste exercise level vadhar wani. Itle body um used to thay jai ane deplete na thay jai. Yeah. So I'm not saying don't exercise at all. I'm just saying we need to build it up slowly so that the body gets used to it and then it doesn't get depleted. This also exercise is really, really good to help not just the body, but the mind as well. And it can really help us with fixing or improving our sleeping patterns. So the biggest thing I want you to take from this is graded exercise, aste aste, vadharvanu, and then see the benefits. Okay, so we talked about stress earlier, a little, a little bit, we touched on it, the, the fact that S stands for stress. So with stress, there's two parts, beer bag. So there's regular stress versus the odd bit of stress here and there. I've put the question here, is all stress bad for us? The answer is no. Um, the big stress can be positive. It can make us get things done um, or it can motivate us sometimes. The problem we have is when stress is continual, when it's long-term, when it's excessive. So stress, you know, it's not a big deal. But long lasting hoy, days, weeks, months, years, then that's when there's a problem. So emasu teja ke stress long term hoy ne to physical reactions hoy ne body ni under e onre. It remains active. So the body then doesn't shut down or slow down. It doesn't then remember how to do it. So that's not good. Um, the body also becomes overloaded with hormones. Ekdam hormones vadi jai. So emaya sar sari na kevai. And on top of that, the liver, which is already strained and needs to help us do various things, um, so that's the reason why regular stress is, is something that we really need to work on and minimize. Okay, so now food. So this is about what food we should have and what food we should try and reduce or even limit or cut out. So eating processed, low quality food deprives the body of what it needs. And it gives the body another job to do. So the body's already tired and got so many things to do. And then we give it another job by eating things that's not good for us. And then what happens is to eliminate the E in sedase, this heavy fibreless food requires lots of energy. So energy or chu thai jai, ek dam o chu thai jai. Energy ja jawan hoi, any badle divert thai jai biji jagiai. It le that's not great either. And um, immune system upar asar thai because of this whole energy business and the fact that we're not eating what we need to eat to nourish the body. The thing, the 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 um, result of that will affect not just the body but the mood as well. So that's another reason why food is really important and it's all in this triad of good health. Okay, so food to embrace. Food that we need is fiber. Um, it provides roughage and it helps our bowel movements become regular. Now, the reason this is important, um, some people say, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, jare um, bowel movement thawani oit yare thase, it's not that, it needs to be regular. Um, the reason for that is because you can imagine that you have to eat your body and 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 your bowel movements are regular and your body is in your body. And the longer it stays there, 
what happens is that food actually comes back into the body rather than coming out it goes back in so the cells that want to get rid of all this stuff actually can't get rid of it um also um refined food lacks fiber so when i say refined i mean processed and we'll talk about that later on but we need to try and avoid processed foods or, or limit it um and then yeah what happens is if we don't have enough uh, fiber the bowel gets clogged and uh, as i explained already the toxins and the waste are reabsorbed into the body Okay, carbohydrates. Lots of people talk about carbohydrates. So we're going to talk about what's good about them and what's not good about them. So carbohydrates are great for producing heat and energy. So that's a good thing. They are reduced to simple sugars, which um, the brain absorbs quick, quickly, the nervous tissues, the muscles, all these things absorb it. However, the excess, that is converted to fat and it's stored. And that's the bit we probably, most of us don't need. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so um, it is not that we should embrace all carbohydrates and it's not that we should avoid all of them because they're different. So refined carbohydrates are fibreless. They lack many B vitamins, many of them, um, they also lack vitamin E and minerals. So refined carbohydrates, which I was talking about earlier, so processed food and stuff, but this specifically refined carbohydrates, examples are sugar, syrups, polished foods, flour that is not 100% wholemeal, instant grains and instant rice, powdered starch, commercial bread, refined pasta, and most snacks. I can um, share that with you in the chat later if you need it. Otherwise I can repeat it and you can make a note. So I'll say it again anyway. So refined carbohydrates that we need to avoid or reduce are sugar, syrups, polished foods, flour, which is not wholemeal, instant grains, instant rice, powdered starch, commercial bread, refined pasta, and most snacks. The reason we want to avoid them is because they don't have enough, they don't, they are fiberless. They are lacking in many B vitamins, vitamin E and minerals. They are valueless. The body can't digest it, it's indigestible and it constipates us, which is really bad for in terms of elimination. So what we need is an abundance of complex carbohydrates, raw fruit, raw vegetables, that kind of thing. There are certain health conditions which if you have it, you need you should seek guidance about how much raw fruit and veg to have um so this isn't like a one size fits all okay protein so um uh probably about two years ago there was lots and lots of talk about protein lots of people were talking about it in the media um get oh i mean enough protein that kata especially if you're vegan or vegetarian protein enough name as boy and athi jase ne olu thai jase you know mostly it was fear mongering and it was not right it was they they were the way they were talking about it was not accurate so excess protein can lead to acidic conditions it can lead to excess of urea in the tissues and it can cause many inflammatory inflammatory conditions so for that reason we don't want to just keep piling on the protein and just having lots and lots of it because it's not good for the body but the other side of that is insufficient protein will cause low amounts of energy poor stamina insufficient resistance to infection it can make us weak it can cause well help lead to depression it can make recovery and healing slow also so what we do need to do is we need to have 0.75 grams of protein per kilogram of our body weight per day i will send this to ashish and then it can be shared with you if you need that because i know it's a bit tricky to remember that um equation if you like okay oil i think if i could see all your faces 
I would I would see that lots of people um, would be oh no do I have to reduce oil because lots of us have tarelu kawanu vagar marketlu tel naktoi all these things so yes please reduce it um, I, I'm not saying cut it out from tomorrow because I don't think that's achievable but if we can reduce it that would be really really good so if possible we should avoid frying because it negatively changes the molecular structure of the food. Um, yeah, I can't say that in Gujarati, but that's what it does. So that's why it would be good to avoid frying. If, if you really can't do without oil, then use a little and cook it on a low temperature. So for example, vagarma, if you can't stomach the idea of doing uh, vagar without oil, then use a little bit and cook it on a low temperature. Alternatively, you can saute things, fry it quickly, and you can also do it using water and tomato juice, which sounds maybe really strange, but if you try it, then, then you'll know if it'll be okay or not for you. Um, you can also grill, bake, and steam foods. That would be a great option. Um, one thing which I really, really want um, everyone to take on is not to reuse oil. So, you know, I mean, bhajia tare, ane pachi e tel cool down te, ne pachi beni manaki de, ne pachi pachu vapre, please don't do it. What happens is um, it creates free radicals, which then cause ailments in the long run. And free radicals can also be carcinogenic, which means that they cause cancer. So we don't, we don't want to do that. We want to either, either just really, limit the oil uses in any way and try not to fry but if you do fry throw the oil away don't use it again um, and the other thing i want to share with you is oil less vagar so probably a year or two ago i started um, doing vagars without oil so i put the rai jiro everything in the pan let it heat up and it actually pops without the oil so and then you can add the um limro mercha tamita whatever it is but basically it works and i have served that to my husband and my mom and other people i know and they did not have any idea that there was no oil in it so it's good and you should try it it's really really like not a big deal um Okay, salt, another, ah, I can't give up salt. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're, we're known for having a lot of salt in our diet. Um, the reason, if you don't know, that we should uh, reduce salt is it can cause raised blood pressure, which can also increase our chances of heart disease and stroke. High blood pressure often has no symptoms. So many of us may even have high blood pressure, but we don't know. And then salt, as I've already explained, there's a connection between that. So... We need to think about that. Now, in terms of amounts of salt, adults should eat no more than six grams of salt per day. And that's around one teaspoon, a teaspoon, not more than that. The maximum salt that children should have depends on their age. And I can send um, a link to um, an article that explains how much they should have according to their age. I can send it to Ashish later and then he can forward it to you if, if that helps. Um, so yeah, so please try and reduce salt intake. Okay, so now foods we should embrace. So here are some of the things that would be better for the body and therefore better than for the mood. So brown rice, this was the whole polished and refined stuff that we were talking about before. So now the good, the thing that we should try and swap our white rice for is brown rice. Instead of white pasta, have wholemeal pasta. Um, lots of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, dried beans and lentils, nuts, all those things are good for us. Um, the reason for wanting us to increase things like brown rice and brown pasta and brown bread and brown flour and all that kind of stuff is because um, to make it brown, they process it and they refine it and they take all the goodness out of it. And that goodness is then, one, we don't get what we need, but two, it's then really hard to eliminate the E in sedase. So that's why, that's why these things are better for us. Okay, water. So um, when, why, how much and how often? So some people say you should never ever have water when you're eating 
like pani pyuj no joy mil sate or dikal like pela ke or dikal pachi or something you should never have it when during the during um meal times other people say you should have water like a liter or two liters first thing in the morning and it's really really good for you and then you should doesn't matter if you don't have it later on um i i want to say to you there's no hard and fast rule so for some people it's better for them not to have it with food the reason for that which is the the bit that's been lost is um digestion ma asar thai so what it does is it reduces the effect of the stomach acid and then it um makes digestion difficult so that's why for some people who have those issues it's not good for them to have water or chas or whatever it is any drink with food they should wait half an hour before or half an hour after for other people it doesn't affect them so it doesn't matter um the thing about having lots of water in one go especially if you have it say i don't know halfway through the day or or whenever it is is that there are nourishments that the body nutrients that the body wants to hold on to and if we have lots of water it helps flush them out so jenny jarur thoi e ame e e bodu nikri jai flush out thai jai so that's that's why that's not a good idea um and if you're like how how i used to be which is um not good at having water i just forget or just didn't i also didn't like tap water um so what i do is i keep um there's a i have this You know what? Let me just get it for you. Hold on. Okay, I have this. Um, it's just a jug or jar or whatever of water, and it's got this charcoal stick inside. So the charcoal stick is a natural filter, and the filter makes tap water taste really nice. So <laughs> therefore, I don't avoid it, and I don't really like using Brita filters or not the brand, but basically those plastic jugs with all these filters that then cause waste and. um are not good for the planet. So this is really good because it decomposes into the soil. If you had animals you could use it in their litter. You can put it in shoes if you have smelly shoes after you finished using it and it helps make them less smelly. There's all sorts of things you can do with it, but it also just the biggest thing is it makes tap water taste nice. And then what I do is I leave one of these in different rooms to help me develop the um habit of having water. And then once the habit is formed then you don't need to leave reminders everywhere. So that's something we could think about doing okay the mind so we've talked about the um body so far and we've talked about stress now we're going to talk about the mind so what i'd like you to do um via the chat option if that's okay with you is if you're willing to share you don't have to can you write share some things that you think you can do to help relax and quiet in the mind you don't have to if you don't want to share you can just put it on your piece of paper so anything you whether you do it or not or whether you want to do it it doesn't matter whichever one so what can you do jena upar tame su kari sako jena upar man ma asar thai ane shant pare ke jara relax tame thao su kari sako ke su karo cho Uh, lots of people saying um yoga meditation uh dancing gym workout walking meditation yoga uh walking so lots of yoga and meditations wonderful listening to music um walking in the woods uh, listening to music yeah cool so thank you comments awesome and i'm not sure if um because i didn't ask you to share this i'm not sure if you do these things already or you know that it does help the mind but you don't do it enough so if you do them already then it's great if you think you need to do them more then let's try and use this period especially during lockdown where we can create new habits um to try and do more of these things to help help us get through it and then also just help us um change ourselves for the better okay so um what the reason the mind is so important is because emotional stresses that are suppressed emotional uh, stresses amid davavene to any asar thai sharir ma so they can physically manifest themselves now that may sound like it's really extreme but actually it's not i think i think a lot of people have physical reactions 
because of the emotional stress, but they often don't realize. Often uh, life is so fast, we don't even stop and realize, oh, man, uh, the connection is, or this is happening and now this has happened on the, it, as an effect on the body. You know, we, we don't have time to think about it or we don't notice, or actually maybe we don't even know ourselves that way because we're not, and we're not used to thinking in that way. So it's really important that physical and emotional elements are investigated, understood and healed. And we can do that in multiple di different ways. Um, I'll talk about that after. What I'd like to share with you is two uh, personal examples of how um, stress has affected me previously. So, um, that, that was what I did. So I think it was a way of control. control as my mum would say, and that was obviously not good. Um, I've, I've grown out of that now. Um, but some and something else that happened is um, when my dad passed away um, 20 years ago nearly. Um, it was a bit of a shock and I think, I don't think I did it on purpose, but because without realizing. So what happened is um, when it was coming up to the one year anniversary, I developed an abscess near my leg. And when I went to the GP, they thought I had deep vein thrombosis, which is what dad had before he passed away. I also developed this cough and through the cough, like the, I didn't have asthma, I didn't have a chesty cough, there was nothing, but I'd end up coughing so much that I'd heave, nothing would come out, but you know, you'd go, oh. and, and dad was vomiting because of the treatment he was having, having, it, having when he was being treated for the cancer. So my body was finding a way to reenact what he had gone through before he passed away, and I think, and, and so does the counsellor think, because I had counselling to help me through it, thinks that it was because I was having all these emotions and not letting myself grieve. So the body was finding a way to say, listen, you need to sort this out. And, and that may sound like it's a really extreme example, and it probably is, and I hope none of you have to go through that. But the point I'm trying to make is the mind is a very, very powerful thing. And we really need to um, help it be at its best. And by suppressing emotions or trying to block things out or not talk about them or whatever is, is just not helpful. So some ideas for emotional support, friends, family, they're obvious. The Samaritans, it's a charity. You can call them 24 hours a day, any day of the week. It's a free phone number. Um, they can't find your name or number or anything. They can't trace you and they are objective and you can just tell them they're a stranger. So you can tell them anything you want and they're not gonna know who you are or anything. You can speak to your GP, you can get counseling, hypnotherapy. There are so many things available to us. Um, we just need to take that step um, to heal ourselves. So please, please do consider it. Okay, so. Um, we have talked about how the wrong food can make us feel physically unwell, how it can stimulate us too much, how it can make us dependent on certain foods and drink, how it can affect our mood when we don't get it or when we have too much of it, how it can make us feel excited briefly when we get that high and then crash when we don't have it how it can drain and divert our energy, which is needed elsewhere to make the body function and do what it needs to have, it needs to do. Um, and we've also looked at minimizing physical and em, um, emotional stress. And we've looked at um, ways to calm the mind and deal with emotional stress. So that's what we've covered so far. Um, depending on your personality and your level of motivation, the creating new habits and making changes can be really easy, um, especially depending on whether, whether you find it um, 
whether you live on your own or whether you have other people you live with who can also support you in making those changes. So for example, you might find it easy to just say, okay, next time we go shopping, we won't buy uh, white pasta, we'll buy brown pasta, I will buy brown rice, I will buy brown flour. For example, those things are quite, depending on, like I said, your personality and motivation, they're easy changes to make. Ch changing the way we react emotionally can take a bit longer. And it's best done with support, which is why we talked about those supportive um, strategies earlier, Samaritans, friends, family, counselling, all of that. Um, so it would be really good if any of these changes, whether it's you find the emotional changes difficult or whether you find um, the physical changes difficult, difficult in terms of uh, what to buy, what to eat or how to cook, whether we fry as much, all those things, um, get support. Like, even if it's just a friend and you you message them every time you eat something that you think you shouldn't be eating or every time you eat something that you want to reduce you know even just telling someone that oh like it can make you it motivate you enough to think okay no I don't want to send that message again so I'm not going to have it you know you just find whatever works for you um yeah and, and just get support Okay, so here are some of the things that I do to keep my mind, body and spirit at its best. So I've been vegan since 2008, which means I don't consume any animal products. So that means I have milk and cheese and yogurt, but I have non-animal milk, cheese and yogurt. I don't have honey. I'm vegetarian anyway. So yeah, don't have eggs, all those kinds of things. Um, for me, for my mind, not being part of a system that causes harm and death to animals is so liberating for me it I, I can't explain the amount of ashanti I had when I found out about that system so not being part of it has just made me feel very content and very calm um also I, I've got quite um I'm quite um aligned with non-violence so reducing hinsa brings me peace of mind um the duality you know like so in my mind, that doesn't make sense. It's a duality because in my mind, I don't want to do it. But in reality, I am part of it. So for me, becoming vegan pacified all of that and brought me a great sense of um, santosh and shanti, which is really good. Um, it also created a harmony between my thoughts and my conduct, which is what I was just explaining. Um, on top of that, the body doesn't need these things. So it, it's helped me, um, it's helped me cut out things I don't need, which is a form of tiag, you could say. Um, and it's also helped me become a bit more minimal. Um, and a result of that is it actually um, helped me with some various health issues that I didn't know were caused by eating dairy, which is really interesting. But I eat well, I have a huge choice of food that, that I can buy or make, so there's no issues. I'm not involved in being, um, I'm not part of the destruction to the environment, which is caused by the dairy and meat industry. And um, like I said, minimalism for me is liberating. It's just, I, I, I do, I thrive when there's, um, I thrive in minimalism, actually. That's just the best way to put it. And the other thing I do is meditate daily. So all of those things are things that I do to help me keep my mind, body and spirit at its best. And I shared that so it might give you some ideas about things you can do, um, apart as well as the other things that we discussed throughout the talk. So I just want to say thank you very much to all of you and Oshwal Association UK, and it's particularly Ashish because he's the one who um, I've been liaising with and gave me the opportunity to be here with you and share all of this with you. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Hina. Uh, really nice and interesting uh, talk. Um, I, I can see myself uh, saying naughty things to myself because I know I've done some wrong <laughs> things in terms of what I've eaten. So uh, I'm going to try and follow a few more of your points. Um, but I think uh, really nice talk. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, we have a few questions um, which we'll um, 
go through. So again, just a quick reminder for those who've joined on Zoom, uh, there should be a Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. If you click on that, you can type a question if you want to ask anything. And we'll try and cover uh, as many questions as uh, possible. Um, just again, a quick reminder, please try and avoid the chat um, uh, icon for questions. If you want to leave any comments or feedback, do that on the chat box. But any questions, uh, use the Q&A uh, icon and we'll try and get through as many as possible. Um, so, you know, I've got a few um, uh, questions here, so I'll just run them through. Uh, the first one is, um, what is the difference between instant and other grains? Uh, for example, uh, any examples of instant grains you could provide? Um, yeah, okay. So, um, for example, you can get those sachets of instant rice. And I think you put them in, I don't use them, but I think you put them in the microwave or you can even put them in hot water for like five minutes and it's done, you've got rice. You can get instant porridge as well, similar type of thing. Um, and you can get ready-made like pasta. So it's in a sauce and it's in a packet. And then again, you just stick it in the microwave and it's done in like five minutes, that's instant. And then the non-instant is, you know, you take it out, you put it in a pan or in a, um, a pressure cooker if it's rice and then you make it that way and it takes 20 minutes or however long it takes. So I'm saying avoid the instant ones. Great. I hope that's clear. Uh, no, thank, thank you. Um, and I think uh, probably something that we're gonna send out on the email as a follow-up anyway, um, but somebody is uh, just asking to, for a quick reminder of the amount of protein we need to take per day. Oh yeah. Um, it, well, <laughs> it might be slightly different for men and women. So maybe we put yes. the follow-up email. Yes. Um, so that that might be easier. Yeah, if it's okay, I'll, we'll, we'll do that because I can't remember. It's 0. 0.75 grams per kilogram of something. It's, it's not uh, easy to remember, but yeah, I'll send that to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, we've got a question saying, uh, can we cook with olive oil instead or should we have this uh, cold? Should, should, have... uh, should we cook with olive oil? Yeah. Or should we have that uh, cold as in not heated olive oil? Oh, I see. Oh, no, you can cook with olive oil, um, but it, um, it has a high smoking point, which is hard to describe. It kind of burns quickly um, and it can go rancid quickly. So, but it's, so still olive oil is better than vegetable oil for definite. Um, and all I would say is, yeah, you can cook with it, but make sure it's on a low heat. So yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, and I think somebody's asking where, where you get your charcoal sticks from. Oh yeah, I, I actually get it wherever it's cheaper, but generally it's been cheaper on Amazon. Um, and I can send you, I can send Ashish a link about that to explain um, if that helps. Okay, great. Uh, and somebody's asking, um, having a lot of water first thing in the morning, is that advisable? So I, I know people who swear by it, who say that it helps them and if they feel so good. And I know other people who feel really sick. Um, so the thing is without taking a proper history of you and understanding things about your digestion, about your health conditions, whether you have any, whether you don't, I can't really say a blanket answer. So that's kind of why I said for some people, it's fine if they have water with their meals. For some people it isn't. For some people drinking loads of it in one go is okay. Generally, I would say having lots of water, it's not about the morning, having lots of water in one go only once during the day, for example, is not good because you really need it throughout so you can top up the body. And also having it in one go means that you can flush out all these nutrients which you need to retain. So that's why that's not good. But I'm, I'm not specifically commenting on whether you should have like a litre or two early in the morning. That uh, depends. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. Uh, just a quick reminder that um, whatever we say here, I think it's more generic advice. Um, obviously, if everybody, anybody's got a specific condition, they would need to consult their doctor uh, in terms of the diet um, changes and things like that. So just be mindful of that uh, in terms of when asking questions as well. Um, again, I've uh, got a similar question. Uh, when, when should we eat fruit? Would it be better to eat fruit after a meal? Before, definitely before. So basically uh, fruit um, digests more quickly. So if you imagine if, you're, if this is your stomach and you filled it with, I don't know, rodley shack, rice, whatever, and then you have fruit on top of that and the fruit ferments quickly and the rest of it doesn't. So you've basically got rotting food in your stomach that can't push through all the rest and come out. 
Uh, so that's why, and then it produces gases and all sorts of discomfort. So that's why it's better to have fruit first so it can get out when it needs to get out and put other things on top. But the other things on top, really, they should be like a half an hour gap. So it's good. That's why it's good to have fruit as a snack rather than with a meal. Um, and if you're having it with a meal, then I would say half an hour before would be good. So therefore, really, it's not with a meal, is it? Because half an hour between how long do you sit for? Um, you know, like, so yeah, so it would be better as a snack. Definitely. Um, and I think I've uh, got another question, I think, like, uh, uh, in terms of making small management <coughs> changes, uh, what are the top three things you would uh, recommend from your experience? From my, yes, yeah, so I can only say from my experience, because I don't know what you're at, where you're at, and what you eat and all that. So um, small manageable changes. So the thing, the thing is, you know, I said it depends on your personality and your motivation. So for me, um, I'm not trying to tell anyone to do what I did. I'm just sharing what was what was my my three things were. I, I watched this video about dairy production and I cried throughout the whole video. So for me, continuing to be part of that when I've just spent, spent an hour crying it just didn't work. So literally, we went dairy free overnight because I think Suraj knew that there was no way I would be able to continue that the next day because of how I'd reacted. Um, so for me, even though that may seem like a really big change, it, it wasn't, it was a small manageable change because I'm, I'm also very visual. So whenever I was tempted to have cake or something, when I went to someone's house, I would see the images of that film in my head and then I would just not want it. So for me, that was small and manageable, even though it may not seem small and manageable to other people. Um, the other one was this to help me drink <laughs> um, because I really wasn't good at drinking water at all. Um, a third one, the oil actually was, it sounded really big and I, I, I really wasn't convinced that it would be okay. So I thought I'd just try it. And actually I tried it and couldn't tell the difference. So then I was sold. So then if I don't need it, then what's the point of putting it in my body, right? Because we get oil through other things. You know, some people say, oh, if you do oilless vagas, you won't get what you need. And uh, like your knee will not have the liquid, liquid it needs around it and all that kind of thing. I'm using not scientific words just to make it easy to understand. Um, but we get oil through other foods that we have. So we don't need to do a vagar with oil and things like that if you can tolerate it. So, yeah. No, great. Uh, I think one thing I picked up was from your list was um, wholemeal and brown uh, rice. Yes. So that's probably something I'm going to try because I normally go for the normal rice, but I think I'm going to try the brown rice just as a small switch. But that's, like I said, I was listening and I think, hmm, I can do this. <laughs> small cool. switch. Um, I've got another question, but I'm not going to take it because it's asking um, whether dairy is harmful to the body. But I think, I mean, some people can be allergic to dairy as well. So I think it's, again, specific uh, to the individual. So I think, uh, again, I would advise that if that is an issue for you, just to consult your doctor. Um, uh, it's it's not a question really for this uh, platform. Um, but one question is, uh, uh, what are your thoughts on intimate uh, fasting? So <clears throat> depends on how you define that. So I know people who um, define intermittent fasting as having 12 hours between. Um, so, for example, if I finished my meal at eight o'clock today, then I shouldn't have anything for 12 hours. Some people call that intermittent fasting. Um, that actually is really cool. But it depends on you again. So, the, so generic answer, I can't really say. I can say to you for some people waiting 12 hours between uh, one day and the next day before eating is really good because it gives the body a chance to digest what's in it. It gives it a chance to rest also, to, to accumulate the energy it needs to do the next thing it needs to do the next day, all that kind of thing. For other people, they, they just can't do it and, and they'll struggle and then they'll become moody. Um, so, so then it's not worth doing that if you're actually going to cause yourself more stress here and physical stress it kind of defeats the purpose um because we're talking about this triad of health right the mind body and spirit so it's hard to just focus on one thing um and other people think intermittent fasting is you eat one day however much you want and the next day you don't eat anything at all yeah i um i, I would need to meet you and talk to you and sort of do a consultation to say whether it, what i think about it for you for your purposes yeah, again, everybody's uh, yeah, different. Definitely. Uh, I'm going to take w one more question. Uh, okay. Just asking whether it's better to have smaller meals with healthier snacks throughout the day or just three meals a day. Mm. This could be potentially dependent. Depend yeah, definitely dependent. It, yeah, it depends on. See, the thing is, 
Mm. Generally, it's good to eat little and often, just, just generally. Um, but the thing is, if you, if you have a lifestyle where you can't do that, then what does that mean for you? So, so that, that also needs to be taken into account. The other thing is, um, one of the reasons little and often is good is because it encourages people or discourages, I should say, people from sitting down and one having one humongous meal um, in one go with lots of different parts and then not eating for a few hours and then having another humongous meal. So, so that's, that's not great for the body. But there are some people who can eat like that, even five meals a day, and they're fine. When I say they're fine, they appear fine. What's happening inside is a different issue. So, yeah, it may sound like I'm copping out, <coughs> excuse me, of answering these things, but it's really not, it's not um, a straightforward one size fits all. Sorry. No, I, I think, you know, you're right. I mean, d diet and nutrition is very individual to the person um, yeah. and subject to a lot of personal sort of conditions, maybe um, medical conditions, et cetera. So uh, one needs to be very careful. Um, so, and I think what I would advise um, from my point of view would be uh, consult your doctor or anybody if you do have a condition to see what would be best for you um, uh, rather than just try and copy somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it, a lot of people do talk about what they do and even what their doctor said to them. But what their doctor said to them is based on their body and their condition. So if I then tell Ashish, this is what my doctor said to me, it doesn't make sense because his body is not the same as mine, right? So therefore, yeah, either a doctor or a nutritionist or um, dietitian depends on what, what your aim is. Um, but, but just keeping in mind, this talk is about all three things. So often doctors don't have the time to look at you in a holistic way. Like, you know, it's a 10 minute appointment. You come here with one item. So it, talking about one thing, digestion, they're not going to then talk about how it affects your mind and your mood and all that. So it's, it's a bit tricky. But yes. Absolutely. And I think a lot of the questions we've had, uh, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, having them. Um, have centered around diet, but I think one other thing which you know, did uh, speak about was um, just the mind and how you can actually um, bring peace about uh, for yourself, maybe just small changes there daily, just to take five minutes out from your busy schedule to meditate or just even literally just sit and think or contemplate something could be a small change which uh, sort of contributes to the overall healthy body and mind. Yeah. Um, so, uh, ab absolutely. Um, I, I think that that's all the time. I think, I'm sorry, you know, we've already gone about um, three o'clock, but thank you for hanging on. Um, th thank you, everybody, for joining uh, as well. Uh, you know, before we close, do you want to say any few last uh, uh, closing words? Um, no, I'm just, just thank you to everyone for being part of it and being here and participating in the polls and sharing your questions and everything via the chat also is really good um and yeah i guess I'll, I'll just send some of the information to ashish and then he can send it to you if that's okay yeah no th yeah. thank you um hina uh, uh for actually doing this and uh, bringing sort of your uh experience uh, and sharing it with everyone um i think um, let me just check the numbers We've had over 200 people on YouTube watching and wow. <laughs> lots of people joining on Zoom as well, uh, So, which has been great. Um, if we haven't covered your questions, uh, many apologies, but we will send an email as a follow up um, to this webinar with some additional information. Uh, and uh, lastly, thank you again, Hina. Um, and I think uh, Hina also runs a uh, website uh, plant shift with lots of information and links um, if you if you want to know a bit more about uh, kind of the subject matters uh, raised today so I think again we'll we'll sort of put that in the follow-up email uh, but thank you everyone for joining and thank, thank you, you for uh, today's uh, webinar is very informative and um, like I said I'm going to try and follow a few of the <laughs> points <laughs> hope everybody else does too so thank you everybody for joining take care Bye. Good luck. Everyone. Bye. <laughs>